Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about introduction to limits. Since this is our first video in the course, every single section will start off with a list of statements of what we're going to learn in each section. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to approximate limits graphically using the graph of a function, and also how to approximate limits numerically using a table of values from the function. We'll talk about the existence of a limit using one-sided limits and also talk about two-sided limits. So let's start off with the definition of a limit. We're going to find out that the limit is the building block for what we need to talk about derivatives and integrals as we get further into the course. So when you talk about a study of calculus, the limit concept will give us precise language where we can actually describe the behavior of a function. So we're talking about f of x. Those are the y values of the function. So we're going to talk about the behavior of the function using this graph, a table of values, or even, even using algebra when x is close to, but not equal to, a particular real number c. So let's look at what happens with this graph that's in figure 1. You have the graph that's increasing from left to right only, so it's going up from left to right. You have x equals c on the x-axis, and when you're at x equals c, you have this hole in the graph. It's an open circle, so that point is not included in the graph. You have what's called a hole in the graph. So if you have x equals c on the x-axis, if you're on the x-axis, you can only approach x equals c on the x-axis from the left or the right. So on the x-axis, you only have two directions, from the left side of c or the right side of c. So this is what's called a two-sided approach to x equals c. If you look at the graph, the graph is going up, and we're talking about the y values, when we talk about limits, the y values are getting close to this number on the y-axis which is denoted as this real number L. So if you're going to x equals c from the left side, you're on this part of the graph, and it looks like the graph is going up, getting closer and closer to L, y equals L. If you're on the right side of x equals c, well, you're on this part of the graph. Notice as you get closer to x equals c from the right side, you are going down as you go to the left. When you get closer to c, you're approaching the hole in the graph on the right side, and it's still getting closer and closer to L on the right side of x equals c. This is what's called a limit. So the graph approaches the value y equals L as x approaches x equals c on the x-axis. So notice that the graph approaches y equals L as x approaches x equals c, even though if you plug in c into the function, there is no point there. So if you plug c in, f of c does not exist, or it's undefined. So you may have a hole in the graph, you may not. We're not interested in whether there's a hole in the graph or not. We're interested in what's happening to the y values. The y values are getting closer and closer to y equals l. And so now let's talk about the definition of a limit. We say that the limit of the function f of x as x approaches c, so that means you're approaching from the left side of c, x equals c on the x-axis, and on the right side of x equals c on the x-axis, we say the limit of the function is this number l, and we write this notation. So limits have a notation, lim for limit. Underneath the limit, you have this x and then right arrow c. That means you're approaching x equals c from the left and the right side. So you're approaching from the left side of c and the right side of c when you use this right arrow. And this limit, the number that the y values are approaching is equal to L. Another way of writing this would be with arrow notation. The y values, the right arrow means approaches, so the y values approach L as x approaches C from the left and the right side of x equals C. So if the function gets really close to a y value of L, that's called the limit when x is getting really close to, but not actually equaling c on either side. And like I said, the arrow means approaches or gets really close to. All right. And like I said in the last page, the existence of a limit at x equals c has nothing to do whether the function is defined there or not. It doesn't matter if there's a hole in the graph or there's a point where it's filled in. The graph may not exist. So if you have a x equals c that's not part of the domain of the function, so domain you talked about in college algebra, 
That means you cannot plug C into the function and get a Y value. So that means you'll have a hole in the graph or possibly a vertical asymptote. So in this last case, it was a hole in the graph. However, what we do need is that the function must be defined on either side of C. The graph must exist on the left side of C and it must exist on the right side of X equals C. So let's look at our first example. We're going to be given a graph and we'll be finding out what the limit is as X approaches different real numbers on the X axis. And if the limit does not exist, we'll actually say why it doesn't. So example one, limit of a function. Use the graph of a function Y equals F of X to determine each of the following limits. So you have this graph that's in dark blue. You have several points that are labeled on the graph as part of the function. You have these two points that are not on the curve. And you also have these four open circles, meaning that those points are not actually part of the graph. So problem number one, it says find the limit as the X values are approaching one from the left side of X equals one and the right side of X equals one. What do the Y values of this function get close to? Let's see what happens. So here's X equals one. I can approach X equals one from the left side. So let's see what happens. If you're on the left side of X equals one, the graph would be here. It looks like as I get closer to X equals one, the Y values are getting close to this point. Well, the Y value at that point is two. So it looks like if I'm approaching X equals one from the left side, the Y values get close to two. So let's do it from the right side now. If I get close to X equals one from the right side, then I'm on this part of the graph. So I'm approaching X equals one from the left, from the right side. I'm getting close to this point and it looks like the Y values are still getting close to two. So this limit is two, it's equal to two. The Y values approach Y equals two as the X values approach one from either direction, the left side or the right side. Okay, number two. Let's look at finding out what the limit is as X approaches two of the same function. So if you look at X approaching two, again, you can approach two from the left side or the right side. If I'm approaching from the left side, the graph is getting closer and closer to this hole in the graph that's at X equals two. Well, we're not interested in whether there's a hole in the graph or not. The Y values are getting closer and closer to three from the left side. If I'm approaching two from the right side, I'm on this part of the graph. This part of the graph is going up to the hole in the graph. And again, the hole in the graph is where the Y value is three. So this limit as X approaches two of the function F of X is equal to three. The Y values approach Y equals three, whether there's, there's a point there or not, we're not interested in that. We're interested in whether what the Y values are approaching. The Y values approach three when X approaches two from the left side or the right side. Number three is asking us to find what's the limit as X approaches three of the function. So if we look at X equals three, we can approach from the left side and the right side. It looks like on the left side, the graph is falling from left to right to this hole in the graph. So it looks like the Y values are getting closer and closer to this hole in the graph, which is at Y equals one. If I'm approaching three from the right side, if I get closer to X equals three, I'm going down and then I have to go up again to this hole in the graph and the hole in the graph is at one. So the limit as X approaches three from the left side or the right side of the function, the Y values are getting close to one. Okay, let's try the last one, number four. Number four is asking us what's happening when X gets close to four on the X axis. What happens to the Y values? So this time looks like the graph has, it's not connected on the left side or the right side. So on the left side of X equals four, it looks like you're approaching this hole in the graph again, which is at Y equals two. So it looks like if you're approaching from the left side of X equals four, the limit is two. But if you're approaching X equals four from the right side, you're on this part of the graph. These are actually getting, the Y values are actually getting close to three. So if you go back to the definition of a limit, the limit says you are approaching just one number. And that one number was called L. In this case, we're approaching from the left side, the limit was two. You approach from the right side of X equals four, the limit was three. You're not approaching just one number. So that's why the limit does not exist. You're not approaching just one number. The X values are approaching four from the left side and the right side. From the left side, the Y values are approaching two. 
From the right side, the y values were approaching 3. So if, since you're not approaching the same number, you're not approaching a unique y value, the limit does not exist. All right. One important observation from this previous example that we talked about is that the y value, f of c, doesn't have to exist. You can have a hole in the graph. You have one x value, x equals c, and from the definition of a function, one x value, you have exactly one y value. So f of c is the single real number that describes the behavior of the function when you get close to c on the x-axis. On the other hand, the limit of the function as x approaches c on the x-axis, it must be a single real number, whether there's, a whether there's a hole in the graph or not. If the y values are getting close to a particular one real number, then that's called the limit. It doesn't matter what is happening at x equals c, it's what's happening when you get close to x equals c. All right, so now since we talked about approaching a real number on the x-axis from the left side, and approaching a real number on the x-axis from the right side, we can talk about what's called one-sided limits. So sometimes you're not always interested in approaching from the left and the right always. Maybe you only want to find out what's happening to the graph as you approach from the left, or what's happening to the y values as you approach from the right. So that's why we need to talk about one-sided limits. It's not always true that the behavior of the function will be the same as you approach x equals c from the left, or as you approach x equals c from the right. The behavior of the graph might be different. In other words, the graph might be approaching a hole in the graph on the left side, but it might be approaching a point on the right side. So to understand this kind of situation, we need one-sided limits, which is called a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. We say that the limit of the function from the left, so you're approaching x equals c from the left side, the limit is equal to a number m and we write it this way. So remember that we were writing limit, L-I-M, X right arrow, so that means X is approaching C, this number C on the X axis. The little minus sign that you see that the superscript, it looks like it's an exponent on the C. This minus sign means you're approaching from the left side of C. So if the Y values are approaching M, as X gets close to C from the left side, then that's what the limit is equal to, it's M. Or again, using error notation, the function is approaching the y values m as x approaches c from the left side, the little minus sign. What that means is that the y values are getting close to a single real number m as x is getting close to c on the x-axis from the left side of x equals c, but not equal to c. In addition, you also have what's called a right side limit. So the limit of f of x from the right side so you're approaching x equals c from the right side. It's a real number n, so just another real number. We write it this way. The limit as x approaches c from the right side is denoted with a little plus instead of a minus. So the limit is equal to n, so the y values are getting close to n when the x values are getting close to c on the right side of x equals c. The y values are getting close to a single number n when x is on the right side of c, but again, it doesn't have to be x equals c. So we're just happening, we're just interested in what's happening as you get close to x equals c on the right side, not exactly what's happening at x equals c. And so we have our first theorem. This theorem is what's called the existence of a two-sided limit. It's exactly what you would, might think. The two-sided limit is you're approaching from the left and the right, and you're considering both directions when you're looking at the limit. Do the y values approach a single real number as you approach from the left and the right? So if the two-sided limit, so if you do not have a minus sign or a plus, you're assumed to be approaching from the left and the right simultaneously. So if you're approaching x equals c from the left and the right, and the y values are approaching L, the left-sided limit, so you're approaching C from the left side of the same function, it's L, the same number, and the limit as you approach X equals C from the right side of the same function, it's the same value. So if you're approaching the same number from the left and you're approaching the same number from the right, then the two-sided limit, you're approaching the same number from the left and the right. So let's look at example two. We're gonna look at one-sided limits and use the theorem to find out what's the value of the two-sided limit. 
So use the graph of the function y equals f of x, so it's a different graph this time, to determine each of the following one and two-sided limits. So number one, find the limit as x approaches zero with a little minus sign. That means you're approaching zero from the left side only of the function. So here's the graph of the function. If you're at x equals zero, that's the y-axis. So here's x equals zero. You're approaching from the left side only. That means you're on this part of the graph. So if I get close to x equals zero, it looks like the y values are getting close to one. So the limit from the left is one. Number two, the limit as x approaches zero with a little plus sign. So I'm approaching x equals zero on the right side. Same function. So if I'm on the right side of x equals zero, that would be this part of the graph. If I'm getting close to x equals zero, I'm getting close to the y-axis. I'm getting closer and closer to this hole in the graph. The hole in the graph doesn't matter. I'm getting close to y values are getting close to two. So that's why this limit is two. So now let's use a theorem. If the y values are approaching one, if I'm getting close to zero from the left, and the y values are approaching two, as I get close to x equals zero from the right side, I'm not approaching the same number. So the two-sided limit as x approaches zero does not exist. You're approaching two different numbers, and we've seen that before in the last example. Okay, number four. Use the graph of the function to find out the limit as x approaches one from the left. So if I'm approaching one from the left side, that would be this part of the graph again, but this time I'm going to the right. As I get close to x equals one, I'm getting close to this hole in the graph. The hole in the graph has a y value at one. So the limit is one from the left side. Number five. What's the limit as x approaches 1 from the right? So if I'm at x equals 1 on the right side of it, that's this part of the graph, I'm getting closer and closer to the same hole in the graph, which is also at still at y equals 1. So if I'm approaching x equals 1 from the right side, the limit is 1. And so this is where the theorem comes in. I'm approaching 1 from the left side of x equals 1. I'm approaching 1 from the right side of x equals 1. I'm approaching 1, the y values are approaching 1 from either side of x equals one. Number seven is asking us to find what's the limit as x approaches two from the left. So if I'm approaching two from the left, it looks like I'm approaching this point. The y values from the left side are approaching negative one. So the limit's negative one. If I'm approaching x equals two from the right side, then I'm approaching the same point, which is filled in or not, doesn't matter. When I'm approaching x equals 2 from the right side, the y values are getting close to negative 1. So I'm approaching negative 1 from the left side. I'm approaching negative 1 from the right side as x gets close to 2. Then I'm approaching negative 1 for the y values when x gets close to 2 from either direction. Okay, three more. Number 10, what happens for the graph, what happens to the y values when the x values are getting close to 3 from the left? So Here's x equals 3. On the left side, that would be this part of the graph. The graph is getting close to this hole in the graph. The y values are getting close to negative 1. Okay, number 11. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right side. So here's x equals 3. On the right side, the graph is here. So I'm, I'm ignoring this point at x equals 3. So this is where the definition comes in. I don't care what's happening at x equals 3. I'm, hap I'm interested in what's happening near x equals 3 as I get close to 3 from the right side. It looks like I'm getting closer to this hole in the graph. The hole in the graph is where y equals 1. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is 1. And so since these two values are not the same, you're approaching two different values. The two-sided limit as x approaches 3 does not exist. You must be approaching the same number from the left and the right side for the two-sided limit to exist. Okay, and just a couple of notes. If there is no direction specified in the limit statement, so if you don't see a minus sign or a plus sign, you're assumed that the limit is approaching from both the left and the right, or it's unrestricted. So you're approaching from the left side of x equals c and the right side of x equals c on the x-axis. So now that we've explored one and two-sided limits using a graph, 
we're going to now find out what's the limit of a function using a table of values. So this is what's called finding a limit numerically. Okay, so example three. Limit of a function numerically. Discuss the behavior of the function. This time the function is given only as its equation. f of x equals 2x squared subtract x subtract 1 in the numerator and x subtract 1 in the denominator. We're interested in what is the behavior of this function when x is approaching 1. Now it doesn't specify a direction, so we're approaching 1 from the left side and the right side using a table of values. So I'm going to show you how to generate a table of values using a graphing calculator. So here's my graphing calculator, the TI-83 or an 84. They have the same steps that we're going to follow. If you want to enter in a function, you go to y equals in the top left corner. You clear out any function that may be already there. I want to enter in this function. So make sure you put parentheses around the numerator because I want that entire um, numerator grouped together. So parentheses, 2, and then the variable button, x squared subtract x, subtract 1, close the parentheses on the numerator, divide by, and then again, parentheses around the denominator because I want x minus 1 grouped together. So now, once you have the function entered, you want to be able to generate a table of values. Now, I want a table of values with these x values. I want to approach x equals 1 from the left side and the right side. So let's see what happens when you get close to x equals 1 from the left. I'm going to choose an x value that's really close to 1, like 0 0.9, 9 tenths. Then I'm going to get closer to 1 from the left side, so 0 0.99. Now I'm going to get even closer to x equals 1, 0 0.999, and then 0 0.9999. So how do you enter in just these numbers into, the, into a table of values? Well, go to second, and then you see the window button. Right above it, you'll see TBL set. That's table setup. I want to change my independent variable, that's the x values, change it from auto to ask, and hit enter on ask. So that way the calculator will ask you what are the values for the independent variable. So now I'll go to second and table. And so I want to enter in these values. 0 0.9, the value is 2.8 for the y value, 0 0.99, 2.98, 0 0.999, 2 0.9998, 0 0.9999, the y value is 2.9998. Now let's see what happens when I substitute in 1. It tells, the graphing calculator tells me that there's an error. Now, if you remember from college algebra, there's an error because if I substitute in x equals 1, the numerator will give me 2 times 1 squared, subtract 1, subtract 1. That's 0. 0 in the numerator does not matter. Okay, it's fine. The problem is, if I plug in 1 into the denominator, I get 1 subtract 1 in the denominator, and that's also 0. You cannot divide by 0. Okay, It's undefined. The calculators give me an error. It's undefined when I plug in x equals 1. So I'm just putting an x through that in my table of values, because I can't plug in 1. So if I'm approaching from the left side of x equals 1, the x values are getting closer and closer to 1. The y values look like they're getting closer and closer to 3. 2.8, 2.98, 2.998. It looks like the y values are getting closer and closer to 3. So let's summarize what we just found out as we approach x equals 1 from the left side. So notice that as x approaches 1 from the left, the y values are getting closer and closer to 3. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the function f of x is 3. So this time we're going to approach x equals 1 from the right side using the table values. So again, let's choose an x value and we're going to get closer with another x value to x equals 1. Closer and closer. So 1.1, if you plug that into the function, you'll get 3.2 for the y value. Well, I'm not interested in what's happening at 1.1. I'm interested in what's happening when I get closer to x equals 1. It's 1.01. The y value is 3.02 if I plug in 1.01. So it looks like the y value got closer to 3. 1.001, 3.002, and then again 1.0001, the y value is 3.0002. So as I plug in these x values, I'm getting y values that are getting closer and closer to 3. So that's why the right-sided limit is also equal to 3. So again, let's summarize what we just found out. 
Notice that as you approach x equals 1 from the right side, the y values are approaching 3 using a table of values. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the function is 3. So now we can say the behavior of the graph using the theorem. Since the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is 3, and the limit as, you, as x approaches 1 from the right is 3, the two-sided limit as x approaches 1 is 3. So they're approaching 3 from either the left side of x equals 1 or the right side of x equals 1. Okay, But again, we're not interested in what's happening at x equals 1. If you plug in 1 into the function, you'll get 0 divided by 0. As I said earlier, that's undefined. So since this f of 1 is undefined, there is no point there. That means there's going to be a hole in the graph. The y values get close to 3 when x gets close to 1. We found that out using the table of values. And we can see that using the graph as well. So here's what the graph will look like for this function. When you get closer to 1 from the left side, the y values are getting close to 3. If you approach x equals 1 from the right side, that's this part of the graph, the y values are approaching 3. We found that out using the table of values. We found that out using the graph. We found that out using the theorem that we had earlier. But we know that there's going to be a hole in the graph because we can't plug in x equals 1. You don't get a y value. It's undefined. So what we just found out is that the limit might exist. The limit was 3, but there is no point there. It's a hole in the graph. Okay. And then one more example we're going to look at. In the next example, we're going to determine limits using one set of limits using a piecewise defined function that you encountered in college algebra. And then we're going to provide a sketch of the graph of the piecewise defined function. All right, example four, piecewise defined function. And we're going to talk about one set of limits and two set of limit with this. Determine the following limits and sketch the graph of a piecewise defined function. Now, sketching the graph, that's college algebra. Finding the limits, that's the calculus part. So if you graph the piecewise defined function in part seven, it will look like this. It's much easier to find one set of limits and two set of limits so far if we have the graph. Okay, and if you graph this piecewise defined function, let's use a table of values. The table of values, I can plug in any x value that's less than or equal to negative one. So I plug in negative one and I'll plug in negative two. You can plug in negative one, negative two, negative three. You can plug in any x value as long as it's less than negative one or equal to negative one. So if I plug in negative one into this function, I get one subtract negative one, it's two. If I plug in negative two into this function, one subtract negative two, the y value is three. So I know that this is gonna have a, this is a linear function. The slope is the number in front of the x. So the slope is negative one, so it falls from left to right. And so the two points that I need to actually graph the linear function is at negative two comma three and negative one comma two. If I have these two points, the graph will go up to the left forever, but it will go to the right no farther than x equals negative one. Next part of the graph, the function, the f of x is equal to four. So the y values are four if x is between negative one and two. So if you remember from college algebra, if the y value is four, so y equals four is a horizontal line. The y value is always four between these x values. So again, looking at the graph, when you're at x equals negative one and you're at x equals two, I plug those two into the function and I get y values are four. So the graph will be a horizontal line between x equals negative one and x equals two. Now, y is in an open circle at negative one. That's because I'm not including negative one in the domain for this part of the graph. So if it was or equal to, it would be a filled in, a filled in point. But since it's strict, the x is strictly greater than negative one, it's an open circle. So open circle at negative one comma four. Now x equals two is included because it's x is less than or equal to two. So that's why it's a filled in point at two comma four. And so now the last part of the graph, it's f of x equals two plus x when x is greater than two. So again, let's make a table of values. I know that this is a linear function because the slope is one and the y-intercept is two, but I start when x is greater than two. So I'm gonna plug in two, I'm gonna plug in three. You can plug in any x value that you want as long as it's greater than two. If you plug in two, you get two plus two is four. 
And you plug in 3, you get 2 plus 3 is 5. So I plot these two points, 2 comma 4, and I plot, plot the point 3 comma 5. 3 comma 5 is a point that's included because 3 is greater than 2, so that's a filled in point. And then 2 comma 4, we already had that one filled in before, so don't worry about it anymore. So the graph will go up because the slope is positive 1, and the graph will go up to the right forever. So knowing this about the graph, now let's answer the problems about the limits. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. If I'm approaching negative 1, x equals negative 1 from the left, it's this linear function. I'm getting closer and closer to y equals 2. Number 2, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of the same function. So if I'm approaching negative 1, on the x-axis from the right side, it's this part, that's a horizontal line segment. The y values are getting close to 4. So the limit is 4 from the right side of x equals negative 1. And now using the theorem, since I'm not approaching the same number from the left side of negative 1 and the right side of negative 1, the two-sided limit, when you leave off the plus or the minus on the negative 1, the two-sided limit does not exist. And number 4, x the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So x equals 2 on the x-axis is here. I'm approaching from the left side. That would be this horizontal line segment again. The y values are getting close to 4. So the limit is 4 as x approaches 2 from the left. Number 5, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side. Well, on the right side of x equals 2, it's this part of the graph. I'm getting closer and closer to y equals 4 when x is getting close to 2. So the limit is, again, 4 as x approaches 2 from the right side. And so now, since I'm approaching 4 from the left side and 4 from the right side, the limit as x approaches 2 is 4. And again, there's the graph of the function for part 7. Sketch the graph of the function. It will appear that the graph will be graphed in pieces because it's a piecewise defined function. A line segment, horizontal line segment, and then again, a line. So this is a good place to stop our first video. We talked about the definition of a limit, the one-sided limit, a two-sided limit, and when does a two-sided limit exist. And we've also talked about how to find a limit using the graph of the function, and how to find the limit of a function using a table of values. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to find a limit using algebraic methods. So this is what's called finding a limit algebraically or finding a limit analytically. We'll be using algebraic techniques to find a limit rather than using its graph or a table of values.